Hey guys, Jarek and Mookie here, gonna be doing some more Halo 5 while the beta is still closed. People have been asking me when the beta goes open. The beta, if I understand this correctly, starts around the 29th and is only for people that own the Master Chief Collection. And I think it's only for the people that own it at launch, or it might be wrong, it might just be everyone that owns it. I think... I think anybody with a Master Chief Collection can get in on the beta. I could be wrong about that. I'm not 100%, but I think that's the case. But I do know that it is going to be open for, I think, like two weeks for people that own the Master Chief Collection. So if you don't want to take my word for it and you don't want to just kind of believe me when I say that this feels more like a Halo game than Halo 4, then you can play it yourself, come up with your own opinion. Which, yes. by all means, please come up with your own opinion. Don't believe anyone you hear on the internet. Don't let other people make an opinion for you. That is a huge pet peeve of mine. It's actually the reason I hate critics and reviewers. They tell people what opinions they should have about a game even though they've never played the game and they have no they have no knowledge they haven't played it their opinion is not valid but they feel like they need to have an opinion because they watched a review of the game of course of course i, I absolutely mean, hate it when people do that it drives me crazy and it seems to be just common you know everyone just seems to think that way yeah yeah i don't know it, it's the kind of thing where like i like games that aren't particularly uh high on everybody else's radar, but that's just me, you know? Yeah, uh, because of that, I generally come up, like I said, I come up with my own opinions and for the most part, ignore reviews when it comes to games. So I will like games occasionally that everyone just thought was terrible. I mean, a great example of this is, I don't even know if anyone remembers this game anymore. Legendary. Legendary, no. It was a shooter that came out, oh geez, it must've been 2008 sometime around there it got ripped to shreds by reviewers and everyone yeah. saying it was terrible and i really didn't think it was a bad game i thought it was fun i didn't think it was you know if i had to guess by review score i would say maybe 6.5 to 7 like an okay shooter nothing fantastic or like the world's best game but like all the reviews were like threes and fours <laughs> and it legitimately surprised me like occasionally that will happen and i'm probably gonna get a few comments like wow you have a terrible opinion of video games yeah whatever <laughs> i don't care you are um, entitled to your own opinion. Yes. Welcome to America. No, you're not entitled to your own opinion if it doesn't match mine. Welcome to America. <laughs> that, that's how America works. So, this game. Yeah, this game. So, uh, I don't know if I already talked about it, but... I, I really don't know why they went the direction they did with the main menu music. It's... it's strange. Uh, I could see possibly if it was a game about ODSTs. Kind hmm. of fitting, because then it would... It, it sounds like your generic military song. It sounds more fitting to Medal of Honor instead of Halo. It doesn't sound sci-fi, it doesn't sound futuristic. It sounds, I am duty, doing duty to my country. Like, that is the vibe I get off of it. I don't get this vibe of I am Super Space Marine, like every other Halo game. Of course, of course. See, the, the main menu music in, uh, in all previous Halo games have always been kind of like, you're isolated in space and here's some kind of crazy theme song. It was the some... Chanting Monks. It's always been like Chanting Monks until Halo 4, which I love the Halo 4 theme song. You didn't seem to like it too much. I actually I... preferred it way more than the old Chanting Monks things. I was never really that high on that, that music. I don't know. I, I think it's like nostalgia for me. Just that chanting monks is so iconic that when I boot up a game and I hear that, I'm like, I can oh, totally, yes. I can totally get that. But I feel the same way about, say, Halo 2's main menu music, where they kind of got away from that when it's just kind of going around uh, New Mombasa and it's. What is the song playing? It's not the monks chanting, but it's one of Halo 2's amazing soundtrack songs. Oh, jeez. Uh, you, you know what about... I'm talking about, though. Uh, the one when you're in the uh, alley with uh, all the snipers. I'm not talking about in-game, I'm talking about just sitting at the menu when it's just actually circling around the city. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it the piano piece? Yes, I believe. Uh, Either way, is, it was it was one of the better Halo 2 songs that was playing. And I, I totally get, like, a bit of nostalgia when I hear that. Because it's like, came out in 2004, I was still in, like, high school at that time. I think I was, yes. like, just going into high school at that time, possibly. I don't even remember anymore. You know, I was, that was ten years ago. <laughs> So, I totally get what you mean by getting good vibes out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, all the 343 games, like, you know, I haven't really given their soundtrack uh, a listen, so I can't really say, because when you're playing the game, you can't really hear much of the music, because they've gone in this direction this where... This guy, they're... so oblivious. 
how do you okay i need to i'm gonna interrupt you the okay. ground pound for the most part is kind of useless i found one use for it and that is getting rid of people with a sword because then you're hovering just out of range but even then they can just if they're not dumb trying to slash at the air and miss you they'll just thrust her pack away and then sword you anyway like i have found this ground pound to be utterly useful because how it usually goes is you jump above someone, you start hovering, and then you turn into a fucking jet engine so everyone knows where you are, because they can hear you from across the map. You, you go to start. slam at them, and you miss at worst, or at, at best, you knock their shields down, and then you're stuck there for like five seconds in that animation when they kill you. So it's really not useful in any way whatsoever. It's more of a novelty than anything else. It's more of a humiliation move, and honestly, I would take, um... I'd it's take one of those, it's, de <laughs> it's definitely one of those moves where it's like, I'm having a really good game and I'm styling on you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> It's like the Falcon Punch, more like. But you you can legitimately use that, just not that well. <laughs> there are various there are specific situations where that's actually a tactful thing to use. Just rare. It's yes, all about the knee. Honestly, I take crouch jumping over a ground pound, but that's just me. Yeah, um, I'm I'm entirely okay with climbing. Um, mm. I'm. See, the problem with all the things they're adding is that. They work well in execution, but when you look at it, it looks wrong. It mm -hmm. gives people a wrong vibe about the game. They immediately assume, oh, this is Call of Duty meets Halo, and it's the most ignorant, stupid thing, opinion to have because you haven't played the game yet. But even I did that. And that's why I was like trying to hold my tongue when someone asked me, what do you think of Halo 5 before I played the beta? Yeah, yeah. You were just like, ah, I don't know. I haven't played it. I can't. It doesn't have visually an appeal to me, and people are kind of judgmental with the game. Of course. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump over to the second game. The second game, this is where you jumped in. So yes. we were teaming around. This game was not fair. Um, when you and I are in a team together, it's generally not fair. That's something I've noticed about Halo 5. There is a lot of teamwork involved. Yes, more so um, than the other games. It, like, way, it's, way more so than the other games, in my opinion and experience. It's far easier to flank in this game because of, I guess, Sprint. Sprint is less of a get the fuck out of a, a combat situation and more of a tactical position yourself. It's more of an... I tend to use Sprint much more as an aggressive approach than to run away. Yes. Now, which is totally different from previous Halo games. Yes. Which is obviously a good thing. It seems like everything this game does kind of tries to make it so that you need to approach. Mm -hmm. they, they try to make it so that it's a, it rewards being aggressive instead of defensive, which any game that does that I love, because who wants to play a game where someone's just sitting back and camping? Of course, of course. Because if you're going to do that, you need to go completely all out, and this is, okay, this is a big problem I have with the game. Where are the guns? <laughs> I cannot find guns where on the ground in this game. It's very difficult to see anything on the ground. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what it is or why. But yes, if you're going to make a defensive game, you need to go all out and do something like, say, Red Orchestra 2, or you need to make an aggressive game. Don't gonna go in between. Now, what's strange about Halo is I've always considered Halo to be kind of a um, kind of a midpoint between like the more tactical shooters, like I don't want to say tactical, but like Battlefield or like some of the ones that are trying to be more realistic and an arena shooter like Quake, you know. I, I didn't really get that vibe, but I definitely got more of the vibe that it was trying to be more almost of a, a thriller type game than a straight up shooter. I really feel that this is the first Halo game that has tried to make an aggressive, almost arena shooter, if you will, than more of a slower paced thriller type shooter where it feels like you aren't... It's weird because Halo has always done this thing where, you know, Master Chief, this all powerful person, but it never really felt like you were actually in control. Like you always felt vulnerable. Yeah, I, if it's one thing about Halo, it's definitely more slow-paced than older shooters and even shooters like, I guess, COD. Like, I don't Which know I'm that's... totally okay with. The, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people say a game is slow-paced and they use it in a way that makes it sound negative. Slow-paced is not bad. Slow-paced in no way is bad. Nice headshot across the map. <laughs> yeah, I was totally not shooting at him. I was shooting at someone just sitting in the blue base and it's like, oh, hey, person with no shields, there you go. <laughs> But yeah, like, it's kind of interesting because they're, um, they're trying to quote unquote realize the Spartan with all of these new mobility options that you have in the game. And I can see why they're doing it. But at the same time, it feels like some of them are useless at this point. Like, maybe they need to be buffed. Maybe they need to be a little bit more balanced. 
for them to be feasible or usable rather like i feel like shoulder bash is kind i of feel like that's perfectly fine that it's there but it's really obnoxious that i have to use it when i'm sprinting and i press melee i want to get an assassination i do not want to accidentally shoulder bash someone or miss yeah um <laughs> the shoulder bash though it's gotten me into like so many situations where i'm like no please no <laughs> Please, no game, please. Yes. Like, I just don't want to do the shoulder bash. And, you know, you played Halo for so long that you just don't think about it, and you do it accidentally, and then you lunge yourself into the middle of the open where there's, like, three enemies near you. Yes. It's like, there's shit, what do I do? There's definitely a lot more to learn in this game from, uh, from the previous games. The other games were pretty bare bones, to be honest. Like, Halo See, 4... See, that's why I really have... liked them. Like, Halo 1 is the most simplistic game you can really get. And I've... In my experience from games I've played, I prefer a game to be more simple. It, like, it makes the game more competitive in a way. Mm -hmm. There's no random factors, there's... You can account for anything, so you know what's going on in the game. It's just raw skill, more or less. Yeah, you... you it gives the player more knowledge without force-feeding him more knowledge. Yes. So, it doesn't hold your hand, yet it still makes it easy to understand what's going on. It's easy to play and hard to master, pretty much. Yes, 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 yes. Halo 1, like... There's so many people who just don't understand how Halo 1 works. <laughs> My goodness, so I was on the Halo subreddit earlier and I got into this conversation with someone that was extremely adamant in the opinion that Halo 1 is the fastest Halo game. And I'm sitting there after playing Halo since launch and never really stopped going, no? How do you get this opinion? And his logic behind it was that, well, the, the times to kill are faster, thus the game must be faster. That's um, not, it's not that simple. Yeah, like I could right totally see, I could totally see if you're saying like, say, Halo Three is the slowest game, because I mean you could argue that easily make an argument for that. It's not really that fast. Kill times are a little bit slow in that game, slower than other Halo games, and you, the movement is also a lot slower. See, the thing is, like, if kill times were everything in making a fast-paced game, then Red Orchestra would be like the fastest pace game out there which is pretty much what i said because you die super quick in that game but it's such a, a defensive slow game which is you know i personally love it it usually rewards players see the thing with red orchestra is it's all about the tension leading up to the battle not really the battle itself mm -hmm. so that's what i love about games like that and really the same thing could be said for swat like i've always found swat to just play a lot slower than core halo games because everyone is like worried about dying so much that they're really they're I'm not going to use the word patient, but like paranoid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like before turning that corner, they're going to they're gonna like halt and kind of look around a little bit and then move. <laughs> of course. So it's definitely a lot slower. There's so many campers in SWAT, like people who think that they're going to they're gonna be okay by sitting in a corner. When honestly, SWAT is still kind of fast paced. Like, it, it really depends on who's playing it. Uh, the people that know what they're playing and how to navigate through the map are going to be a lot faster because it's... With SWAT, you want to approach before they get a chance to do anything. Yes. So, that just kind of works the best. But in general, like, it doesn't seem to play fast. Like, I feel like SWAT really that rewards double kill. players. That was a pretty sick double kill. <laughs> that was both we, of them running into my grenade for no reason. We kind of dominated this match, didn't we? This I match forget if this was, was one of my better matches. Yes, yeah, this, this is where... I think this is the first match you came in. I believe this is uh, the one where you actually got perfect... <laughs> <laughs> the 16 perfection. zero with the sword. Easy mode. Um, this was not a fair match. It really was. <laughs> 46 and 12, totally fair. Yeah. Jeez. I actually didn't even <laughs> notice it was that much of a difference. <laughs> Teamwork is way more important in this game. Oh, yes. And I, I don't really think I need to say much more. You, you can see why. Assassination to win, I'm totally okay with this. <laughs> 15-14, that is, that is not a good game. Not for them, at least. For well, us, it was amazing. I don't even want to say amazing. Honestly, when I'm having a game where I'm just destroying the other team, I almost have a hard time keeping engaged because it's, like, too easy. Of course. <laughs> it, like, I'll check the scoreboard numerous times. Like, is everyone still in the lobby? Why are we winning so badly? And as you can see, the scoring was pretty even through everyone. Mm-hmm. Even the person last on our team got more points than the person in first on the other. It's uh, it's pretty ridiculous. That's pretty <laughs> bad. <laughs> okay, so this has been some more Halo 5. Hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next video.